Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. I just got this game today from my friend. It's called Quest, the Knights of the Round Table. Uh, it says down here, whatever company this is, is a division of Heritage Models. Let's see what's in here. You can see on the outside there's uneven discoloration. What happened here is most likely another game was placed right here and after sitting for 30 or 40 years this side here became discolored maybe it faded due to the sun or whatever i tried cleaning that off it doesn't clean off and this part stayed mint so that happens on occasion with old games if uh they were stored with uh something else sitting on top of it that didn't completely cover it no big deal all right so as you see here the these were held with a rubber band of, but after 30, 40 years, the rubber band corroded. If you guys, have, well, I'm sure you guys got plenty of board games, but if you do, never store the cards with uh, rubber bands around them, because after uh, a few decades, the rubber band will dry up and corrode, and sometimes it corrodes almost like an acid and uh, can burn the cards or leave marks. Sometimes you can clean it off, sometimes you can't, but I recommend just keeping the cards in a little uh, Ziploc bag or something. Uh, try not to use a rubber band. But the cards have encounters on them, and I, I took a quick look at the rules, and I think the ENC refers to how many wounds you get or something, and if you get more than three wounds, you go back to the round table to sit for a while or something. I forget what the FA stands for. I haven't fully read the rules, but some of these are no encounter. So you're basically, I think you move three spaces, and then you have an encounter or something. Looks like a really simple game. But let's take a look through here a little more. As you can see, the counters, this is really thick material, so what the, uh, what they were punched out of. Let's take a look. They're kind of like stand-ups. They have little stands on them to stand up the counter. And there's also a D12 and a D8 in here and some little tokens. All right, so this is from Game Time Games. I don't think I, I can't remember ever owning a game from that company, but who knows, uh, at least not as far as I can remember, but... Anyhow, it says it can be played by from up to two to six players. It says it's a fascinating game based on the legends of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Fast moving and easy to play. The rules should be read carefully as there are some features new to most players. Thus warned, thou art now a knight adventurous, and may thou fare well as thou salieth forth to do battle perilous with ye insidious forces of evil in thy great quest. Okay. Object of the game is to complete a difficult quest, perform great feats of arms, and return safely to Camelot. And here it's talking about how to prepare for play. Rule book's only four pages. And that's going over movement. Uh, knight may be moved up to three spaces in any direction or combination of directions and encounters after movement except in camelot space is a quest space or if the knight does not move or if the movement ends in the same space with another knight or or knights an encounter card must be drawn so you move and resolve encounters and if you get too many wounds you go back to the sit at the night um the round table and there's some magic tokens quest spaces knightly jousts and here's how to win. When one knight completes his quest and enters his chair space around the round table in Camelot, all other players then have only 10 more game turns each to try to complete their quests. That sucks because uh, you finish your quest and then you got to wait around 10 turns for everyone else to finish. But who knows, maybe they're fast turns, but sounds kind of boring. The player first to complete his quest may keep track of these 10 turns. All knights that complete their quest must remain in Camelot once they have entered their seat space. At the end of the 10 turn game period, the number of feats of arms and all knights who have completed their quests and are in their seat spaces are compared, so that's where you figure out who won. And it looks like it's got some information here on uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, the actual story. So there's actually only one, two, two and a half pages of rules. It looks like this is meant to be a really simple game. And here's the quests that are on this uh, player aid card here. The first one is the Black Knight, and then you have the Dragon Behemoth, and then Sir Pyrrhus de Forest Sauvage, and the Witch Evil. I'm sure some of this stuff I'm mispronouncing. I apologize for that. I'm from Chicago, and Chicago 
know we mispronounce everything. Uh, the fifth one is the Saxon King. The sixth is the Giant Terrible. And then Thieves and Murderers. And then the Evil Wizard. Now let's take a look at the map and see what that looks like. It's a mounted map. That's nice. See if I can zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, this is as far as it zooms. I need a wider lens, but it looks like for each player, like Sir Galahad here, I don't know, you keep track of something here, and then you got keep your magic to tokens there and your quest tokens there, and here's the map you move around on. Interesting. Anyhow, this looks like this won't take too much effort to learn since it's only two and a half pages of rules. So I'll try it out, and it's, if it seems sufficiently interesting, I'll review it for everyone. Thanks for watching, and have a good evening.